I would even I would even write it this way. G T gravity. And do you know who is working in G T gravity during last three or four years? Of course, you may guess. So, <laughs> so Russians know that if you say uh, Russian poet, they, the answer is uh, Pushkin. So if I mention somebody who is working on something for several recent years, the answer is, of course, Pasha. What is the answer? Pushkin. <laughs> Almost, yes. <laughs> Edward Witt. So, Pasha, let me tell it for you personally and for the rest of the people. It's an advertisement section. The GT gravity turns out to be this. And this recent work of Edward Witten explaining the work of Mirza Khan strongly motivates the proposal that 4D theory is actually like this. Okay, so it's kind of announcement of the set of ideas that I'd like to share with you outside the scope of this book, of this course, okay? And then, okay, I'll erase it. Secret formulas, not put on the record. Just visit. Uh, too, too late, they are already on record. You already recorded, yeah? <laughs> yes. Uh, so any other people want to recall? Okay. So it's a, so it's one course, and uh, I hope, I hope that I will force Misha Schiffman to start a joint course on beta functions in supersymmetric sigma models and gauge theory. And instantons. So I somehow sent Misha Schiffman the plan of this course. And uh, if he would be interested, we can also run this course. However, Misha Schiffman, I hope you know Misha Schiffman. So he is quite a well-known physicist. Now he is in uh, Minnesota. By the way, one of the so they discovered topological theories, however, did not develop it properly. So since, since they were doing that all their life, they would be interested to see the fresh point of view. And uh, I hope. And uh, of course, here there will be bauer cartan equation for beta function, non-perturbative uh, summation of instantons, explicit formulas and technique on toric varieties, Fadeyev approach to gauge theories, and many other things. But this is separate. So, <clears throat> so, 
So now I hope to return to our main course. What you're saying about quantum gravity is very interesting. I hope, I hope. And uh, moreover, it's not only the question of quantizing gravity, it's also a question to study its uh, cosmolo cosmological consequence of it. And there is some activity here. Maybe it would help to understand the dark matter. And uh, I mean, gravity is weakly coupled. However, if all your matter is uh, it comes from the neutral fermions, you probably need to rethink the, the equations of uh, of evolution of the universe. Maybe not. Maybe it would look like a correction. And also, this could be related to the following issues, how to quantize uh, quantum gravity, how to quantize particles uh, uh, together with gravity. Moreover, it turns out that this approach so quantum gravity is also useful in the issue that is called ambit twisters. The same approach to gra of gravity clarifies what ambit twister strings is or are. Okay. So, but it's a separate thing. Okay, so now I think that everybody who wanted to come is already here. And uh, my advertisement section seems to be over. Yes, so 15 minutes of advertisements are over. And now, now we will go to the issue of another BCOV. Or actually, BCOV for for what? For uh, toric manifold. For toric manifold. For, for toric A modules. <clears throat> so, let me start. So with each year you are go, go growing older and you start to understand, start to think about history of the subject. So first of all, what are these BCOV? BCOV is Bershavsky, Chikotia, Guri, Wafa, who published a great paper on before we study what is another BCOV, we need to recall what is the first BCOV. Or original. So original BCOV, it's paper of Bershavsky, Chakotia, Guri, Wafa that followed Prominent work of whom? Pasha. Of Edward Wynn. Uh, mm -hmm. It's called, it was called Chern Simons as string field theory.
So in this great work, Edward Wheaton said that we need to study not uh, just bosonic, Edward Wheaton, not just bosonic, or super string, but other strings. And here he put forward the idea here of universal string. So what is universal string? Universal string is super, no, okay, not, not super. It's uh, topological conformal field theory in dimension two. I would say not just topological conformal field theory, but higher topological conformal field theory. So you see, when you have a new year, you used to recall not only history, but your own youth. So when I was young, when I was young, I always met this abbreviation, topological conformal field theory. And I thought that uh, it is meaningless. If theory is already topological, in which sense it is conformal? Hmm? So later, when I grew, I added this letter higher topological conformal field theory. Let me explain what does it mean. So first, first way to understand it is the following. You have conformal field theory. It means that you have energy momentum. Holomorphic energy momentum and anti-holomorphic. Energy momentum with the bar. So this means conformal field theory. Okay. Then what does it mean to say that it is topological? So naive way would be to say that T is zero. However, now we understand that it is naive way to say that actually it's not zero. I especially put a question marks here in order not to confuse viewers. It is actually Q of GZZ. Q of G bar Z bar Z bar. So when I say this anti-commutator, you, you may ask what what would it mean? It's better to say that it's not just anti-commutator, it's better to say, to write it this way. Because this notation with the bracket means that it, that it is an action. And of course, the action in quantum field theory is generated by currents. However, you may ask if, if it, it's always generated by currents. In, in any case, there is an action of Q and Q square equal to zero. So that's, that's what is meant by topological conformal field theory. Then you may ask, what do I mean? By putting H here, by putting H here, I mean the following. If you have conformal field theory, correlators are functions on modulate space of complex structure.
So when I have G or I have conformal homotopy, I need to I need to say that the D bar G is zero, D G bar is zero. The correlators are not just functions of the moduli space. Correlation, correlation functions or everything are differential forms. Sorry, I need to erase what we can say. So I go from functions to differential form on modulus. So how how can I do this? Of course, I can use do this using the G fields. And the way how, how I will do it, the way how I will do this would be a two dimensional version of what I did in the quantum mechanics. So in quantum mechanics, we have the following formula. Okay. And this was universal proportional evolution operator. And when we expand it in powers of t, we get differential forms on the on the space on the moduli space of metric graphs. Okay. So, in two-dimensional case, I have a two-dimensional version. Of this. Namely, I consider. Exponential of what? Of mu g sigma of mu bar g bar sigma. You can see that what I wrote here is a generalization of this exponential piece, okay? So I need to command Sorry, I need to put here, of course, vertex operators. I need to command on mu. What mu is? Okay, mu is called Beltrami differential. Beltrami differential. So mu belongs to omega zero one. times t one zero on sigma. So this is the definition of Beltrami differential. So it is well known that the tangent vector to MGM is isomorphic to mu divided by equivalence relation. So when I say section, of course I mean smooth. Because, okay, what else could it be? I have zero one here. So it means, that for a tangent vector here that I will call u, 
I have mu of u. And here I have u bar. Please note that this formula got uh, new attention recently. If you will study so-called ambi twister strings, you will come back to this formula. So it's good to study it for different reasons. However, this formula, formula written in this way, should be attributed basically to let us attribute it to Edward Witten, 1992 or 93. So let me comment on this identification. What would happen? Uh, if I uh, put here d bar v, I, I uh, sorry, I'll do it not here, I'll do it here. What would happen if I put here d bar v? I can integrate by parts, so naively by integration by the parts. I get zero. You see, when I say naively, of course, I mean that there'll be some tricky thing, okay? So what could be a problem? Why this thing may be not zero? Hmm? What could prevent me from getting uh, functional on the tangent space? Pasha, what do you think? What could prevent me? What is what is potentially wrong with this argument? Uh, the, the insertions of other fields that we need to go through. Of course. And uh, this is a thing that uh, confuses Edward Witten all his life. He always does this formal or arguments and he always forgets that there may be insertions of other fields. And here there are these fields, vertex operators. Okay. So if we do not impose any conditions on vertex operators, no conditions. on V, then here we can have a pole of an arbitrary order or even something more singular. I don't know, I have no idea what could it be. Like logs, they're not that singular. So no conditions would mean that V should have zero, of infinity order at mark point. Hmm? So if we don't want to impose conditions on V, so no condition. We will get tangent space to the modulate space MGN with a double line, okay? 
that is modular space of this is of Riemann surface with the jet of local coordinates. At mark point. Okay. Now, if V has a double zero at mark point, we will get tangent vector to the space MGM tilde. First jet of local coordinate. And this is actually important uh, modular space. It's not modular space of complex structures, modular space of complex structures with the first jet of local coordinate. This is remarkable bundle. Because this remarkable bundle is uh, the Marita Mumford bundle. So you see double, you see, let me stress this double. So it means that the G could have a single order pole. It would be killed by the double zero. Mm, maybe I made a mistake. Maybe I made a mistake. Okay. I'm sorry. Hello? Da. Что? Нет, это я его приходите, я вам сейчас все отдам. Нет, 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 нет. Один, три, семь, иди шестьдесят четыре. Окей, I'm so I'm sorry for for interruption, but it's life, it's life. Okay, so now let us figure out. Am I right about double zero or single zero? You see, if you go if you got confused during the talk, it's better to say that it is done intentionally. Okay, so let us derive it. So we have G times V, and we have a vertex operator. So here is a double. And here is the rest. <coughs> So, what do you do? You cut out from the sigma the point Z, okay? Then you integrate by parts. And, and here you have what? Here you see 
Here we have the following. Here we have a singularity. So what kind of pool is allowed? Okay, of course, double zero. But double zero and V means that we that pool should not be. Pool in G and V should not be greater or equal than third order. Okay, because here I have a residue. To take a residue, I need the first order pool. Here the integral is over the circle, not over, no, not over the plane without a disk. Yes, it's over the boundary. So now, now, now let us see how it goes. Here we have this integral. Okay, V. So if V has a double zero, uh, I'm sorry. Okay. So let us check the order of zero. Okay. So if if here we have a would we have a single zero? It would mean mark point. When we have a double zero, it means a mark point with the first jet of local coordinate. 
So it's so it's okay here. Now, if we have a double zero, it means that that the pole of the third order is not allowed. So only poles. But is it clear of the first and second order are allowed? I think so. Okay. And uh, thank you for correcting my misprint. And of course, the picture is like this. Here we have vertex operator. Here we are, here is sigma minus disk around point Z. And here we integrate D bar V times G. So it goes to the integral of the boundary, sigma minus dz. And this boundary is this sz, that is sz. And here we have gv. Okay, so that's how we get this tangent space. So, so, the, so here we described that if, once again, that if GV does not have third order poles, we have a differential form on M tilde GM. Then, if, if we can have first order poles only, or first order zeros, so V is something that we factorize over. It correspond to having mark points. So the notion marked was introduced in physics literature by Edward Witten. So V having first order zero at mark point exactly means that we are factorizing with respect to diffeomorphism that preserve marked points. Okay. And 
And if V is general, so for general V, it means that construction does not see the marked point. It means that it does not see the mark. And you may think that it is a crazy condition. Why should we bother this? Bother here? It's because that we can consider a different V. If V is very singular with G, we get uh, form somewhere up. Then there is an interesting interplay between V and G. When we have uh, here pole of the second order, pole of the first order. However, sometimes you may think, what would happen if you put here something that has no poles? And the simplest case where it has no poles is, of course, one. What would happen if we put here one? And if we will put here one, it would mean that we just not see this point. So actually, it would mean that differential form <coughs> would have no component in the direction when the point is moving. And all, all these three cases are important. Like putting one some, somewhere and observing that uh, differential form is uh, horizontal in this direction would lead to some uh, zeros. And these zeros would lead to some identities that are known as puncture. They have a name. The, uh, this name is so-called puncture identity. And uh, hopefully we will not study them in this course, otherwise I will never end. But I mentioned these, uh, these issues. And uh, if you would like to see the literature, the good literature is Zwiebach around 90s. So he wrote like 100 pages explaining all these modular spaces. So what is important here is that second order pole between G and V corresponds to action on the local, on the first jet of local coordinate. Now, when people were doing or defining universal string theory, they had to define condition when you have universal integrals over the modular space. So you have MGN tilde, and here we have MGN, and here the band, the sorry, we, here we have MGN, and here we have like C to the N, or actually, actually, it's kind of a line bundle.
So we see start at the end. In the moduli, yes. Yes, it starts with that. And there are characteristic classes of this bundle. That are called Marita Manfred. So similarly, there are vertex equators V tilde that lead to forms on MGN. And there are also vertex equators V that led to differential forms on MGN. And of course, you have an issue that from, then from this, you can get Differential, differential forms downstairs times the first chain classes of these line bundles. So condition on V saying that G has no second order pole. Is sometimes called strong string condition. However, mostly not interested in this restriction because in C star, you have a non-compact direction and compact direction. So actually, it is enough to say that G naught minus G naught bar applied to V equals to zero. Because G naught minus G naught bar corresponds exactly to the S1 here. So if you look precisely of what you have, you have to relax this condition and use only this condition. So once again, G not V is coefficient in front of one over Z. G not bar of V is coefficient in front of a one of a mod this z bar in the operator expansion of g bar. Uh, and it's 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 cut off a little bit the, on the right. Okay. Maybe you can turn it turn it with the camera. Yes, a little bit. One second. Yes. Uh -huh. It's probably too much. I mean, no, no, maybe a little bit, a little bit back. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Okay, I'll write here. So actually, what I'm telling to you, ah, and there was another condition, is that. Sometimes you have G and G. And there should be no singularity. And this is similar to the condition G square equal to zero in quantum mechanics. So basically, what I told you is the content of the paper of Edward Witten is the construction of universal string theory. So we, we want uh, the, to impose the condition only in the circle direction, but not in the non-compact direction. Yes, only in the circle direction. 
and and why so? And this would be important. Only this condition is meaningful, and it is this difference that I'll call g not minus. G not minus g not bar is too long. It's better to call it g not minus. I don't know how to write it better. Okay, so this is what Witten would call universal string. But so why do you want the condition specifically in the U1 direction? Because uh, I have no uh, abstraction in the uh, C star direction, in, in the radial direction. Mm -hmm. Because I can contract, I can contract the transition function to mm -hmm. having only rotations okay. from having rotations and and, trans and translation mm -hmm. so actually all these jets would be contracted to these rotations mm -hmm. and uh, when when uh, when these things were studied in the, the context of bosonic or superstring, people uh, try to skip corresponding papers, per corresponding pages from the text. Why should we bother in, in this? However, later on, it turns out this, that these conditions and uh, so-called gravitational descendants are important in uh, string theory. And people had to to recall it. So actually, it was only in the year 1993 where this started uh, to be interesting. Before, people skip that, saying, ah, these are technicalities. Okay. Now, let me comment that in the year 1993, in his paper, uh, Chern Simons as a string theory, Witten did not lift it to the notion of higher, higher. Uh, Topological conformal field theory. At that year, he was thinking mostly about the top forms in the moduli space. And in his paper, he was thinking about, he imposed the conditions that, that is not very useful. Namely, he imposed conditions that. Uh, I, that I'll write down right now. Witten said That there should be 3G minus 3 plus M. Only 3G minus 3 plus N insertions of of G. So he was looking uh, at this theory like. So he was trying to treat the theory like bosonic string theory. 
So it is wrong. Okay. Has to be corrected. So Witten was keeping in mind bosonic string theory. Because in bosonic string theory, there are so-called BC system. And for BC system, the correlator is zero if the number of Bs does not exceed the number of Cs by 3G minus 3. So he kept this in mind. So, so what, are, what are these there? Well. The, these uh, in the, in the, in the in bosonic string. Uh, all right. Thank you, Pasha. I forgot that main example for Witten was conformal field theory plus BC system where there was energy momentum tensor that is a sum of matter energy momentum tensor plus energy momentum tensor for BC systems G was B and Q was the integral of C T plus one half C T B C. Oh, so so that's uh, that's V M times C times C bar. That's what that, that means. So V C V C C bar means. Yes. So, so it's so it's kind of, okay. So yes. Uh, okay. Actually, okay. B, B, B bar, B bar. Then that's what he kept in mind. Because he kept an example of conformal field theory plus BC system, of course, plus B bar, C bar system. Mm -hmm. okay. So this is for T, and similarly for T bar, G bar was B bar and Q bar and Q, okay, let me call it left. Let me call it right. And Q is Q left plus Q right. So VM, VM is some primary field of dimension Yes. Zero, zero, yeah. or... yes. So, so that's why Edward Witten kept this in mind as a guiding example. And keeping this in mind, he wanted to look on the similar construction in universal string theory. Namely, he wanted to see, he wanted the sum selection rule for G and V such that. Uh, it would resemble this formula in bosonic string theory. So it has to be corrected. Because simultaneously, he discovered WDVV, where the main trick is that we should study differential forms of any degree on the modular space, not only top degree. So he was confused in 93, okay? Okay, he was confused in 93, he got the basic ideas, that's why we should refer to this paper, but we need to not to cite it, but also know that uh, 
this paper uh, has uh, some misconcepts in it. So these misconcepts were actually improved or settled in the paper of 1994 by Kansevich and Malin. By the way, already here, already here, if you, if you study only such vertex operators, you would miss interesting example of the dialectal. Why should vertex operator be like this? It's a philosophical question. If you demand it like this, it's okay. But actually, you need to impose just condition of this G not minus closeness. So the year 1993 was the year of rethinking what string theory is all about. Another generalization. In the year 1984, people invented heterotic string. That was super string in one sector and bosonic string in another sector. And in the year 1993, I was curious, 94, I was curious, could we consider heterotic sector in the following way? Could we take bosonic string in the, for the left movers and something else for the right movers? Like topological string, so-called topological string. Another string, of course we, of course, we should be able to do this. Now I am pretty convinced, especially when people discovered what they called ambitwister string. That is outside the scope of my talk. Maybe at the very end of the course, we will come to this ambitwister string, okay? But still there is an idea if you have left movers, uh, right movers, we can play this game. So Wheaton was not clear here. And uh, this unclarity of Edward Wheaton, this unclarity of Edward, of Edward Wheaton came to the work of Bershatsky, Chikoti, Aguri, and Wafa that I will describe. What about the time police? Yes. Yes. So I have spoken for, uh, for 50 minutes. Now we need to make a break, right? So I explained. So here I explained what is the universal string? What is the strong string condition? What is the bosonic string example? Why Witten was confused here? Okay. So why you should refer this paper, but read it with caution. Okay. Otherwise you will get wrong ideas into your head. Okay.
Ok. <coughs> so I hope that now that break is over. Ok. Unfortunately, you see, I call it uh, five minutes break. It's 10 minutes break. However, 10 minutes break is actually more relevant than the five minutes break. But if I declare it uh, 10 minutes break, it will be 15 minutes break. That's too much. Okay. That's why uh, we have five minutes break that uh, takes 10 minutes. Okay. Good. 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 So now, after we reviewed the Edwards written paper, maybe there are other deep ideas there, but I reveal these ideas. Um, let us go to BCOV, who wrote the remarkable paper just right after Edward Witten. Once again, what they did started as, as always from development of Edward Witten's idea, ideas. Uh, so, So please tell me if we will go out of focus. So how to get more strings, more string theory. So actually it was again, Edward Witten who, who guessed how to do it in the end of 80s. He said the following. Let us start with n equals 2 superconformal quantum field theories. Actually, 2 comma 2. In this series, <coughs> there is an algebra that contains energy momentum tensor. G plus, you hear plus is upstairs. It's a standard motion, three halves. G minus three halves, and also a current. Mm -hmm. With dimension one. So what you should know is that G plus three half, G minus three half, here I have Z. Here I had zero. <clears throat> this went as follows. It was one over Z T. Plus, I think, one over Z squared J. You may check uh, dimensionality here. Three half, three half gives us three. Here we have two and one, it's three. Three half, three half. Here we have one, one over z square. So J is the R symmetry current or? Yes, so so I think here, here there was G, but what is more important, I think, is that here there is also one of the ZDG. So I'm not sure. I don't remember this piece. Maybe this piece is absent. It's not that important for me. I think this may, maybe this piece is even absent. You see, I'm sorry. And also, uh, G together with G plus minus was like 
1 over z g plus minus. Yes, it was our symmetry. So then we can say, look, what would be if we consider this g plus? Or maybe okay, I put here g minus for some reasons. Okay. What if we consider this g minus? looks like BRST current. Uh -huh. Good idea. It has wrong dimension three half. But if I integrate G minus of G plus, I will get T plus this gadget. So it's almost what I what I need. And then we can came to the following idea, actually based on on his other works about Donald's about Donaldson theory, that the new energy momentum tensor should be this T new. And if this is new energy momentum tensor, then with respect to the new energy momentum tensor, G minus becomes a current. G B RST and G plus becomes what? It becomes G field. Just that, and it is called twisting. So actually, you need to make a twisting in two sectors, in the for left movers and for right movers. Okay, so actually, you need to do two twistings. This twisting is written on the abstract level of superconformal field theory. However, it is kind of instructive to see how it works for the free field theory and for the theory that is close to free field theory. And that's what we are interested in. Understand twisting for theories that are close to free field theory. So, Andre, uh, is there a kind of a discussion of um, what happens with spin structures when you do that? I mean, there's a choice, uh, I guess, of uh, whatever Ramon versus uh, Neve Schwarz when you only have ah, these three halves. Of, of, course, uh, of course, you need the current uh, to be periodic not to be a section of the non-trivial bundle. <coughs> ah, so only one of the spin structures works. Actually, you may even think that this is not really needed, but that's how it started. And this is one of the possible ways to see why constructions are like that I will mention. And also, that's what how Witten was thinking about it. And you know what? Here you do have this extra current. And I told you that Witten was looking for this extra current in order to get the top form. Because he kept in mind that he should mimic the selection rules. Okay? Witten wanted to have selection rules, like in bosonic string theory. So we will come to it 
in the moment. And here there is such a current. So let us consider an example. Okay. So you mean the selection rule that the total charge under, under the little j should be zero or? Yeah, the total charge should be three, three G minus, mm -hmm. minus three, huh? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Oh, example. Consider the complex field X and consider the action DX D bar X bar. Okay. I can have several of these. And here there will be a metric. So remember, it was about n equals two. So G was metric. Later on, you will see that when you are doing it from twisting, you would not get the full scope of models. But people are completely confused because they use the width and paths to get the unit. Okay. So for Witten, it was important that metric is scalar because uh, he started and with n equals so called two comma two theory. So what else do we have here? Of course, we have here fermions. left fermions and right fermions. So these are left and these are right. And also terms that are proportional to the connections. And also terms that are proportional to the curvature that I don't want to write down here. <clears throat> so these guys were had dimension one half zero, one half zero. And these fields had dimension zero one half, zero one half. Okay. I specifically write it this way to show that it is simple. Once again, what I'm explaining is simple. You do not need to know sophisticated differential geometry, algebraic geometry, anything. You should be able to understand it from examples. Okay. So you may check that in this case, the energy momentum tensor is G I I bar D X I bar D X I. So here, please keep trace on what is above the derivatives. Here, there are two holomorphic derivatives. Maybe I would even put here Z to stress it. Okay. <clears throat> And then there is the G field. And G field, of course, 
is made out of what? What could you write down here? You don't have a lot of choice. Unfortunately, this G is a standard notation. This G is a standard notation for metric. Okay, I know what to do. I'm sorry for changing notations, but let me call this G G small in order not to not to mix G's. This is probably not uh, not all of the stress energy tensor. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. And there is also fermionic piece. Mm -hmm. Maybe with, with one half here. Uh, And there is also a current. And what could, could you write as a current? The, four, the two formulas for G, so the second one is for G bar, but then del should be del bar or, or what? So, so, uh, so somewhere here, so one thing should be plus and one thing should be minus. So, so here, is, uh, here ah. everything written for the left movers. Okay. So I put here left. Mm -hmm. And similar formula formulas for the right movers. Okay. Now now we have this interesting operator that says uh, it's about fermionic charge basically so i thought i got it correct so here here there is a bar and we will see who is plus, who is minus. And what happens, uh, and propagators are clear, and uh, we will see, so let us see how, how things are going. Just let us consider operator product expansion of these two Gs. So let this be plus, this be minus. When I have operator product expansion of these two Gs, I have what? I have one propagator contribution. Okay. So it could be either propagator between fermions or between bosons. So when I get propagator between fermions, I get the first order pole. And here I have two small Gs. And one inverse small g in uh, uh, from the propagator, and I'll get energy momentum tensor. At least in the, from fermionic propagator, I get bosonic term, right? From bosonic propagator, I have the second order pole, right? That's why here I have not psi psi, but psi deep psi. Mm -hmm. And metric is uh, proper. So what I'd like to mention here is that, of course, propagator of psi i, psi bar i bar and x i, x bar i bar go like inverse metric.
this would be important later. Okay. Now. Sorry, between, between x and x bar. Sorry, I don't understand. It's, it behaves like a logarithm between x and x bar. Of course. But here I say, here I, here I mean that it is proportional to the inverse G. Mm -hmm. Or, so, he, so you see, depending on the derivative, derivative determines the type of the pole. But I'm concentrating on the dependence on the target space metric, mm -hmm. because this would be important. Okay. <clears throat> so, if we have two propagators, oh, so uh, so this, so it's also possible to get this side side then in the in, in form of D J. So uh, making an exercise, you will see that on the right hand side, you'll get not only, only energy momentum tensor, but also this J with the derivative. Now, what does it mean to make a twisting? To make a twisting means that Energy momentum tensor is modified to energy momentum tensor times dj. Okay, so actually fermions are charged under j. So I ignore these complicated terms and I consider this system as kind of decoupled bosonic and fermionic system. So fermions are charged, are charged under this j. So G has a first order pole with fermion, right? So DJ has a second order pole with fermion. And when I make this shift, I just change the dimension of the fermion. So in the weak coupling limit, and the weak coupling limit means the gi i bar go to infinity or gi i bar go to zero is small. So in the weak coupling limit, the twisting is just the change of dimension of fermions. Huh? Just that, no mystery. <coughs> oh, so you're saying that this is not, not so, not in the weak coupling limit. It's, a, it's in the weak coupling limit. Yes. Because, because when I say, so if uh, here I have more complicated dependence on X, I will have complicated dependence on X here. And, uh, and things would be more complicated. I, I would have uh, higher corrections. Uh-huh. There'll be, there could be more propagators. I don't know. Things could be more complicated. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to study this more complicated things. I just want to, to consider the weak coupling limit, the leading limit here. And in this weak coupling limit, the only thing I'm doing is uh, change of the spin of the fermions. 
I do not consider propagator between uh, X fields from the metric with uh, some other fields, okay? You see, it, 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 it is a good question how to study higher corrections to this twisting. But I am not going to do this, at least here and today. In my parallel course on sigma models, I am going to study this, okay? But not but I, here in this course. But I, I presume when, when these formulas were originally written, uh, it, was not, uh, it was not in the lowest order uh, in the number of propagators, right? Of course it was in the lowest. So there are exact formulas for super conformal field theories. Yes. They are exact. They, they come from the algebra. And there is the weak coupling realization. And uh, I'd like to stress that here there is a difference. Mm. So Wheaton's twist is something that is more general. It is not related to weak coupling. It could work for so-called minimal models of uh, supersymmetry. And it works for any coupling. Uh, th this has to be compared with the so-called WZW construction. There are some construction that you get from the weak coupling limit. And there are also exact algebraic construction. And uh, the warning is not to confuse them, okay? So if you would try to study so-called alpha prime or higher order corrections to these formulas, mm -hmm. you need to go to the algebraic description of the model. However, if you would like to work in the weak coupling limit, you consider just one propagator contribution. Like in WZW theory, you have the weak coupling formula for energy geomentum tensor that is one over k j squared and you have quantum correction here here in this business you should also expect quantum corrections to everything when uh, you consider non-trivial metric you see yeah, I see are you saying that the formula for the change of stress energy is uh, will not be like this? If you yes. to... so this is weak coupling representation of stress energy tensor. Mm -hmm. So one has to be careful not to mix exact algebraic formulas with weak coupling formulas. However, in the literature, these two things are often mixed up. So I am here exactly to tell you that there are two types of formulas, exact algebraic and uh, weak coupling sigma model. Okay? And I'm telling it because you see, in my parallel course that I hope to start, I will discuss these, these corrections. Okay. And unfortunately, unfortunately, I want to say, in the literature, people just uh, copy Witten without thinking what the master said. That's why. I'm giving you two explanations of what, of what is going on, okay? I assist, still I stress that from my current understanding of what is going on, sigma models have to be redone. Hmm? Together with alpha prime correction, it's not that stupid, it's still interesting. 
It is interesting to study sigma models beyond uh, the weak coupling limit. Mm -hmm. Like it's interesting to study WZW beyond this limit. And here we will see difference between weak coupling or Lagrangian description and actual things, okay? But before I would go with enthusiasts to these details, I'd like to study weak coupling first, okay? I think it's reasonable. I think it's fair, okay? Mm -hmm. Mentioning once again, that algebraic twisting is valid not only as a weak coupling. And he, so there is universal algebraic twisting and weak coupling representation, okay? Uh -huh. So now you will get the proper uh, viewpoint on the subject. Okay, <clears throat> so in the weak coupling, what would we what would we have? One of the fermions would become a scalar. Another fermion would become a one form. Okay. And now we have two choices called A choice and B choice, okay? Since there is a complex structure here, we have a choice. <clears throat> Would we have only holomorphic fermions that are scalars or there will be one holomorphic, one anti-holomorphic from the target point of view that would be scalars. Two choices. So first choice, it is called A choice. A model. In the A model. So both ones are the same. It's a weak coupling. What happens with fermions in the A model? These are scalars. I put here zero just to show that this is scalar. And this is scalar. I put here zero. And this is one zero, and this is zero one. And this is A model. So let me see. And these fields were written, okay? And you may check, does this look like the description of A model from instantonic theory that I was teaching you? And the answer would be, in order to make an instantonic theory out of this, we need to consider P pi i, equals g i i bar psi i bar. Pasha, do you remember that we discussed that during the summer? Hmm? Uh, we already discussed it yes. during the summer. Mm -hmm. However, the quality of the camera was not that good. <laughs> And I apologize. So
So in the A model, you have this one. And uh, fermionic terms. O is just pi bar psi i bar. Psi i zero plus pi bar i bar d psi j. And of course, propagator between pi and psi is one over z. Here, propagator contains an inverse metric. However, pi field is enforced by this metric. So, pi i psi j goes like delta i j, one over z. And then you can do another thing. So I'm describing you the A model. What you can have here, for bosons, you can introduce P fields. Plus, so you can rewrite this term. And here you have the integral of the Keller form. Ah, by the way, when I wrote it this way, I somehow ignored the, I was kind of lazy. Here, uh, this term has to be properly written, not like I wrote. Ah, I don't like to erase fermionic term. You see, I was lazy. I wrote it this way. However, there should be another term with D and D bar interchange. So wouldn't I be lazy? I would write it this way. So what is the difference between these two terms? Here I have D bar, here D, and here all the way around. Difference between the sum and single term is of course the X star of the Keller form, okay? It's the difference. Here I have D bar D, D D bar. And here is the difference. And this term is called in standard in standard series theta term. So if you want to have to take an A model, not only you rescale fermions, you also adjust the theta term. It's a star of what? Of G, of the Keller form. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I surprised you. Let me write it this way. G I I bar, D bar X bar I bar D X I minus D X bar I bar D bar X I. This complicated expression is of course just just this. Right. Mm -hmm. Pull back of the color form. Mm -hmm. And I was lazy not to include it here because you see formulas are, that are so, so long that uh, you see I'm lazy to write down here, eat them in terms of pluses and minuses. By the way, on, on the topologically trivial space, you may forget it, but on topologically non trivial space, you need to know that if you go from the standard term, to this, what is called a model, you also have this theta term. Mm -hmm. Now, from what I explained you several talks ago, in the weak coupling limit, this term goes away and we get delta function. Okay? However, note that it means that this theta term goes to infinity. So it's not a standard thing. So nevertheless, this is what is called A model. So A model is an instantonic theory for holomorphic maps. Now, in the instantonic theory for holomorphic maps, we did not have this condition of uh, having matrix that is necessary that, uh, that is necessarily Calabria. We also could just forget this matrix. We here we actually have bivector. This bivector could have zero. You see. So instantonic theory is much more general than what you get from the twisting. And it also led to a lot of confusion. So instantonic theory exists without twisting. Here there is a twisting. Moreover, let me put, a, put, let me put here another remark. If you study this non-zero by vector, you may ask if this is still a conformal theory. So this would lead to equation of this non-zero by vector, like Einstein equation. And it will turn out that it's possible to solve it in this way only on kalabi yao manifold. And that's why people were thinking deeply in their mind that all this story is uh, reasonable only on kalabi yao manifolds. And it led to a lot of confusion. So, so what actually happened? There is an a model, that is particular case of instantonic model, okay? So when you are getting something from twisting, you and you say that you have weak coupling, but say non-zero coupling, not degenerate coupling, you, you find yourself in uh, Calabi-Yau setting, with Calabi-Yau matrix. However, theory exists without it. And uh, this misunderstanding led to a lot of confusion. Like physicists thought 
that we should study only holomorphic maps to Calabi Yao manifold. While mathematicians said that we should that we can consider holomorphic maps to a complex manifold that are not necessarily Calabian. Okay. They are not necessarily Calabiao. Moreover, they do not need to be Calarian. It's enough to consider almost complex structures. And all this confusion is the issue of could we consider zero coupling here or not? Or should we be able to, to deform it inside the conformal field theory or not, okay? So even now, people are mostly confused about this issue. Even now, People uh, refuse to admit that a holomorphic map to CPN mm, is a conformal field theory. And that's why for such physicists, uh, Grom of Witten theory is a mathematical construction. Okay, so that's why I spent some time here. So it was about a model. Okay. Now, let me spend some time on a model before I go B model. You see, if there, are, if there are two models called A and B, it is uh, crazy to start with the B model. You have to, to look at both A model and B model from the witness point of view. So once again, Edward Wheaton preferred to have a what? Calabi Yao manifolds so that we will be able to put some non zero coupling. Small, but not, but not zero. Okay. Because he, wo he was working in the second order formally. Now, let us have a look at vertex operators, okay? So we are not writing this series uh, before vertex operators. We need to write down BFST currents, etc. So what happens with Q, okay? Q was what? It was, it was G times what? Times uh, Psi DX, at least Q left. So it was this integral. Oh, 
look, when I am making this transformation, okay, without this transformation, let us see how this Q acts on the fields that depend on X and Psi not I. We have a propagator here. Dx propagated with x. So here we have a derivative. We have inverse metric in propagator. We have metric here. Metric and inverse metric cancel each other. And this action is nothing but psi d over dx applied to f. So action of this twisted uh, supercurrent on the function of x and uh, psi naught is exactly the piece of the Dirac. And if we add Q right, so I need to, maybe I need to put indices properly. So once again, so, so when I, okay, schematically, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you the right thing. I'm telling you that, that these uh, supercurrents act as a DRAM operator here. So sum of Q left and Q right produces you the run. And this is the result. So when you started with the twisting, you have not in mind that you have the run. You just compute it out. I mean the run. Once again, note that current contains metric. Propagator contains metric. The action is metric independent. And this is not surprising if you go to the first order formalism. But in the second order formalism, it works like this. So the fact that you are getting the RAM after twisting in the Witten, in the Witten's approach is kind of a mystery, okay? For some reason, you are computing something and you are getting the RAM. Actually, when we will go to the B model, running the same procedure, we'll, we'll get another differential. So here, the RAM, was not built in the model. It just happens that twisting reproduces the run. And here, this point of view is different from the point of view that we had in instantonic theories, where the run was built in from the very beginning. Here we are just computing and we see, oh, we have a run. Disadvantage of this approach is that it works only for a restricted case of geometries. Advantage of this approach is that we can get something more general than the RAM. Okay. So the RAM 
is a kind of weak, weak coupling limit of something. And if we are on the strong coupling limit, it's not at the run, but something. So there is something that in the weak coupling limit goes to the run. So it would be the proper way to explain it. And we may compute uh, corrections. Something algebraical that was not at the run in the weak coupling limit become the zero. I think it's interesting. Okay. Now, let us look at so-called selection rules. We have fermions. So these fermions are zero forms and these fermions are one fourth. And that's why on the Riemann surface, we have an anomaly, anomaly. Before we study this anomaly, we need to look at the G field. So G field is what? It's once again G times psi like one zero form. What else could you write? Dx, okay? So maybe in the, so, so let us see the indices, okay? Here, one zero, it has bar here, no bar here. So this is a G field. What's, what's important here? Important here is that G field has a fermionic number. It has one zero form in it, okay? One zero form. So that's why we, we may ask how many G's we may insert Insert on sigma g. Mm -hmm. How many g's? The answer is clear. The number of g's should be equal to three g. Sorry. 2g minus 1 times what? Times the, the dimension of the target space. Ah, complex dimension. Look. Look at this nice formula. Let me try to explain appearance of dimension of x. On the Riemann surface. I have the zero modes of these psi one zero fields. The number of these zero modes is G minus one. M minus the number of the opposite fields, the index. Each supercurrent or composite B field contains them. So the total number of G fields is such that they should soak all this uh, fermionic zero modes, okay? And fermionic zero modes, the number of fermionic zero modes is G minus one times complex dimension of X. 
Mm -hmm. So we see that we, so we already met this formula in my talk, like about one and a half, one hour and a half ago. Let me recall the old Witten's idea. Witten wanted three G minus three fields. Well, this G is a okay, Q. Where Q is a genus. That's what he wanted. Okay. He wanted this selection rule. We have this selection rule. So what Edward Wheaton would conclude? He would conclude that things match only if the complex dimension of X equals to three. Okay. So this is in his paper on Chen Simon's string field theory. He says, look, it works. However, X should have complex dimensional three and it has to be Calabi Yao manifold. So Witten had, had in mind That universal string of type A, I just follow the written idea, works only on three dimensional Calabial. Hmm? I just followed his idea. And uh, when master said this, what, what else can you do? You follow the master. Master said it. What's more important is that master never explained that he was a bit wrong. So would we can say, no, in my great paper of the year 93, I made the wrong assumption. He would open uh, other possibilities to physicists. However, it is known that Witten never admits his mistakes. He makes a lot of progress. He puts in a lot of new ideas. And when you are putting new ideas, you are making mistakes. It's inevitable. So the bad habit of Edward Wheaton is not to admit mistakes. And that confuses the followers. Like me, okay? So what the follower has to do? Follower has to go after Edward Wheaton and uh, clean up the mess that are left after Witten made the construction. So that's how we get this crazy condition of having a three-dimensional Calabio. Do not need to do this, but because of Witten's perception of universal string and Witten's idea of twisting, We are left with this construction and uh, BCOE did almost the same thing, but in the bit twisting. Now you see that in the bit twisting, you will still have three demands to a Calabi-Yau manifold. Okay? Inevitably. Okay? Mm -hmm. Time policeman tells me, 
that I need to make a five minute break. However, I am glad that in my historic perspective, I explain to you the origin of three dimensional Kalabiyao in BCOV, that it comes from the witness perception of universal string. And, and why it is like this? So I'll discuss more about BCOV after the break. Huh? Good? Pasha, say me something. That it's okay. Uh, very good. Very good. Thank you. And I hope that I am not insulting Witten too much because. I think every result should, should be attributed to Witten. No, no, it's, uh, you see, if you attribute every result to Witten, uh, then it means that uh, you, you only mentioned his faults. Okay, so it's also the, the good idea. So first idea that Witten invented everything. However, he made this, this, and this faulted, faults, and we are just cleaning them cleaning the mess okay yes. so uh and andre we're on for a discussion later at 11 pm moscow time right sure sure right. so I, I i invited uh, I think he was interested. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So later on, I'm going to discuss uh, JT gravity and uh, Mirzakhani mm -hmm. in terms of this. Now I don't know. Palatini, okay. Actually, not Palatini, but Einstein. So Einstein invented theory, and then he considered that it's a mistake. And he, he said that it, that it is his mistake to study it. So it was attributed to Palatini. However, it was invented by Einstein. However, Einstein uh, considered it as, a, it as a mistake. So once again, uh, it's, it's not clear how to call this theory. So people call it Einstein Carta, Palatini Carta, Palatini Einstein. So the theory, the theory is kind of a bastard. Okay. So nobody wants to be its father. Maybe, maybe it's like this, uh, what's the, the name then? No, no one's axioms. Yes, no. yes, you see, <laughs> it, it looks like a no one, but you see, well, but, but it becomes a tendency, you see, no one's axioms, uh, no one's theory, you see. Mm -hmm. So maybe if we combine it with your previous proposal, let us attribute it to Witten. Yes. I think it's uh, how is it? It's like in how is it, the terminal object, right? All the arrows go there, or you can find an arrow. Ah, now I know how to treat Edward Witten. You know there was a game. It's called uh, "You Won a Million. So <laughs> you started the game when million from the bank and give it to you, show it to you, that it is yours. And then you need to answer questions. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you need to put money in, into different places. And if, uh, and if, so like, like you see, there is a question, maybe you have seen this uh, show. It's called uh, be a millionaire or something like that. Mm -hmm. So they give you a million, you can touch it. 
one million of something. And then uh, uh, you need to put uh, this million uh, over to как люк-то будет по-английски? Maybe a hedge. Hedge, да, правильно, правильно, hedge. So you, so you need to put this money above hedges. And uh, one hedge has number one, another has number two, the third has number three. And then they ask you a question. No, first they ask you a question. And uh, the wrong, uh, the hedges uh, with the wrong answers are open. And your money mm -hmm. is falling down. So mm -hmm. the only way to keep your million is to put it uh, only above the hedge with the right answers. So you, of course, you are, you are hedging the risk. So you, mm -hmm. so you divide your million into pieces. Mm -hmm. And every time they ask a question, some money is falling down. And since you, they ask you 10 questions, you may just evaluate that like two to the power 10 is a lot. You will not get your million if you just smoothly uh, distribute your money, you'll get 1,000. But what is interesting in this show that you can touch your million. The only thing you need to do is to keep your million until the end of the show. And you constantly see how your million is falling down. Mm -hmm. And show starts when the special car from the bank brings a million to the studio. And you are actually touching this million, but it is falling down through the hedges with the wrong answers. So, so that's... Uh, how we have to treat uh, Edward Witten's works. <laughs> so let us give him first all prizes in uh, theoretical physics and mathematics. Okay? <laughs> and then put it on the hedges. And what other people are doing, they are finding mistakes. So whenever they find mistakes, piece of this money goes down. Still, there is a lot left. But Edward Witten actually behaves a little bit like like a person who plays this game. He wants to keep everything, you see? He wants to say that uh, among his 200 works, every word is correct, but it's impossible, you see? But still, uh, the mess has to be cleaned up. Doesn't, doesn't he have his first? Doesn't he have his first training in, in journalism or something? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's sort of the legacy. Yeah. Of yeah. So when, when you say that everything is correct, but you yes. see when you say that everything is correct, and you and you never admit that you are uh, that you are wrong. At the end, it turns out that people suspect that you are not right. Here, 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 and here. You need to say, here I was right, here I was not right. Then you keep half of the million. Otherwise, people are confused. That's why Witten is not uh, making the uh, collected papers. The only way to do it is just to take Witten's paper, read them like I did, you see, I, I, I was reading some Witten's paper. Yes, you, you may see. Think why, what he was doing, why he was doing, what were his insights, what were his uh, misconceptions, separate and explain. So that's what I'm doing for uh, 30 years, by the way. Going after Edward Witten and uh, Clean, cleaning, 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 okay? So somebody has to go after and clean the mess, right? So he, is, he has only one main mistake in general. He pretends that he is always correct. Would he cure this mistake? He would be the greatest mathematical physicist.
Oh wow. Hmm? But it's good. In this atmosphere, I have a, a field of research. Those people are afraid to clean after written. I can clean after written, okay? It's a wittenography or how to call it yes, this field. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it resembles me, you know, the Russian joke that uh, Russian joke is as follows that uh, wife says to her husband look you are tired every day after your work and uh, what are you doing you are cleaning the lavatories every day for very small salary why are you doing it? And he says, ah, you say I have to quit aviation after 30 years, you see? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so, so somehow I'm just a person for this anyway. So, so for 30 years, I'm cleaning after me. <laughs> <laughs> And I am not, and I am not going to quit the reaction. Okay. Okay. I think now, now we can. Uh, Start the third part of the BCOV. <clears throat> so now I'm going to explain you several other ideas. You see, I'm explaining you ideas, okay? So I can make a mistake in science, but I hope I'm not making a mistake in ideas. So let me put several ideas of other great people who were working in 93. So now, so now let me try to explain B model. So in the case of B model, you have the same bosonic action. So I do not need to be lazy. I should not be lazy. I should not be lazy. I need to put the second term. Last fermions. And now, what should we say about fermions now? So here are left moving fermions, and here are right moving fermions. So the question is, who is going to be scalar? Okay. So previously, we have left mover, left mover, who was the holomorphic scalar and right mover who was anti-holomorphic scalar. So it was scalars. Mm -hmm. 
Now, now we would like to to do the following. Uh, let me try to remember the convenient terminalization. Uh, so now there will be left mover, anti-holomorphic scalars, and right mover, anti-holomorphic scalars. So there will be also left mover holomorphic one zero form and right mover holomorphic zero one form. So uh, how can I write this thing down? I bar, I bar. Left, right. I. I. So one zero, you see one zero also means that, that you are left. And here is zero one. Okay. So when you have this, you may try to write what? You may try to write the currents. So Q left. Let us see what Q left is. Q left is, of course, psi i bar left dx i g i i bar. Okay, so it is one. So Q right, psi right i bar. So where are? Uh -huh. D bar X I okay. So these are Q's. So I want to keep this formula. Now, Q total is of course Q left plus Q right. And then what are the fields? Vertex operators. Of course, they have to have dimension zero. So what are they? For, of course, they are functions of x bar and also two crazy copies of something anti-holomorphic. Psi left i bar, psi right i bar. Hmm. What is it? Okay. What is it? Something uh, crazy, yes? Two anti holomorphic copies. In order to see what, what actually happens here, it is instructive to apply Q here. Look, due to the structure of holomorphic anti holomorphic indices, the scalar fermion is all, always anti holomorphic. So here we have always holomorphic index of the boson. So it means that we will always have 
anti-holomorphic derivative here. So Q applied to this F would be D over D X bar I bar applied to F multiplied by Psi left I bar plus Psi right I bar. Now we see, oh, look, it is something. This looks like Dalbo. If we consider sum of left plus right as the Q of X bar. Okay? So sum enters here. And the, re and the origin of this sum is, of course, that the Q is Q left plus Q right. Now, so here we have the sum. And what about the difference? Huh? But there is also a difference. So there is a difference. Q left I bar minus Q right I bar. Can you guess what, what would happen with this difference? Hmm? My, my game is to wake up Pasha. Because for me, it's morning. For Pasha, it's night. Um, oh, so what is, how would you think, what is this difference of uh, anti-holomorphic phenomena? Can you imagine something natural that has another anti-holomorphic in this? Okay, plus is in Dalbo complex. Where minus comes from? Hmm? Partial. Hmm. Let me give you a hint, okay? So I will keep this answer. I will keep this question until you until you will get an answer. Okay? So I will see who will first guess it. So let me do the following thing. Let me compute G. So G, there are two G's, G left and G right again. So G left is made out of psi one zero, right? It could be del star operator or something like that. Mm. No, it's it's a field. It's a field. Okay, you will see. Mm -hmm. You see, okay, I am preparing as a stage for you to discover. Okay, so G is this one one zero. Once again, you have dx i bar, gi i bar. You see, I'm writing this because it's the only thing that you can write. It has dimension two. And gr is similar. Once again, holomorphic index here. However, anti-holomorphic index is here. So you may ask, why, why I spent my time writing GL and GR? Recall that I did it exactly 
to consider the difference. Namely, I'd like to compute. So, okay, I have done with Q. I wanted to compute GL naught minus GR naught, okay? And of course, I am going to compute this difference applied to the same function. So here I have a function of x, x bar. Now this is, here I have psi plus. Mm -hmm. I call it plus here, i bar. And here I have this strange minus i bar, okay? So let us make a computation. Hmm? So first, let us compute g left zero applied to the function of x x bar, psi plus i bar, psi minus i bar. It's better here, of course, to put here left and right for the beginning. Look. I have always I bar here is because of B twisting. So here the scalar fermions are all anti-holomorphic. That's why here I have all only X bar here. So here I will get D over D X I applied to it. And what would I get? I need to look, it's GL naught. As the second order pole that I explained in the beginning of my talk. So it will come not only for, from bosonic propagator, but also from fermionic propagator. So I need to take here what? Not, so this comes from bosonic propagator and from fermionic propagator, I'll get D over D psi. So it's in the left sector, L I bar, okay? And of course, G I I bar, right? So GR0 applied to F gives, gives me GII bar DF over DXI, D over D psi R I bar, okay? And if I consider minus, ah. Ah. Mm -hmm. it's an anti-field for X somehow. Uh, anti-field written, written doesn't allow you to use anti-field. Mm -hmm. Ah, it's this operator. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. So I, I have to put here F. Yeah, I can put it here or there. So this, that's it. So now maybe you can see something. Mm -hmm. So what is the meaning of the difference of psi What is the meaning of this difference? Well, I started with the question. What is the meaning of this difference? Mm. 
Well, you know, it's BV operator, right? Exactly, it's BV operator. You just combine this G with this Psi, and you will see that it is D over D X I, D over D theta I, F of X, X bar, Psi plus theta. This crazy metric goes out, okay? No more metric. And you just write down that theta i is g i i bar Psi left, I bar minus Psi right, I bar. You see, good made out of evil, holomorphic made out of anti-holomorphic. Metric disappears. B BV operator appears, okay? So this is the B model. Here we see that in the model Q actually becomes Dalbo and G not minus becomes Delta B. So, you know, these formulas, if you go, go from AKSZ language, well, I explained you these formulas starting from the twisted theory. Now you see what is going on. Hmm? So there are no ghost numbers around here, right? Of course not. Of course there are ghost numbers around here. How can you say there are no ghost numbers? Of course there are ghost numbers. But theta was just a fermion. I mean, it was not degree plus, plus one or minus one. It depends how you... It depends how you consider currents. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> so you have a ghost number for the left movers. You have ghost no number for the right movers. Of course, mm -hmm. you have ghost number. And then you, you, you say they're homogeneous in ghost well, number. Again, once again, so now you need to attribute. Now you want to say that theta i and psi plus i bar made out of the linear combination have the ghost number. C. So what Witten would like to call C. They have the same ghost number. So somehow plus one. Yes, plus one. And of course, the G field has the ghost number minus one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so the G field. Uh, 
we uh, we could uh, look at the G field as a homotopy. So how can we view this? So, okay, let's see. Let us see. We will see how to view it as a homotopy. So once again, the G fields, G fields contain Psi zero one or, or Psi, Psi one zero or Psi zero one. And once again, we have this selection rule. Then the number of Gs should be equal complex dimension of manifold times q minus one and once again that's why you have to say that the complex number is that the complex number uh, of the space uh, of the target space is three that's why b c o v Considered not the general. They considered not the general uh, manifolds, even Calabiao manifolds. They considered three dimensional manifolds because they followed Witten's idea from the paper that appeared just one year before. Okay. Now, Let us see what about vertex operators, okay? So now, again, I'll concentrate on the B model. By the way, I'm concentrating on the B model because it's in the title of my course, okay? So I have to explain B model in some detail. So, in bosonic string, the ghost number was expected to be 1, 1, C, C bar V. In B model, you have to study similar thing. So you have to study something linear in theta and simultaneously linear in psi in C plus. So the only thing that you can study here is the Beltrami differential. That's why you study Beltrami differential. To, certain, to, to please Edward Witten. So you study Beltrami differential on the three-dimensional Calabia or manifold, hmm. right? Hmm. What else can you do? So that's why BCOV studied built primary differential on Calabia threefold because they followed Edward Witton's idea of this ghost saturation. So it was, it was hard for them to imagine that you should consider vertex operators with different ghost numbers, like vector fields or functions, or like uh, by vectors, okay? Because it would mean different distribution of ghost numbers between between vertex operators. As you know, in string theory, you could do it. Here, there is another B in my course. So, bosonic string, okay, also contains B, okay. 
So there are many bees in the course. So in the boson extreme, of course, you have these operators. It's not the only operator that you have. You actually also have these operators. And these operators correspond to symmetries. of the background. Okay? So people uh, often ignore it. And you may say, I don't want to study symmetries of the background. I want to start a, study amplitude. So if you would do, would do like this, you would insist that all ghost number is equally distributed among vertex operators. However, here you study symmetries, and then there are also such guys, as you know. These correspond to anti fields. Um, sorry, I, I didn't understand the symmetries of the background, what, what you were saying. Let us see. Let us come back for a moment to bosonic string theory, because mm -hmm. bosonic also has B, and it is in scope of the course. By, by V, do you mean specifically the vertex operator of uh, scalar field theory? Uh, let, let us consider an example. You see, I always like consider simple examples. Mm -hmm. Example. Consider bosonic string theory. Okay? Plus well, BC system. Let us let us compute Q cohomology. So we have in the meta se se sector something like this. Sorry. So and the German tensor. Let us study this vertex operator, C times V over X. So C times V over X is not that nice. It's better to put it this way. So C has dimension minus one. So I want to have something that has dimension one. So I put here this and I put here this. Now let us compute cohomology. Hmm? So here we have the first order zero. So we are looking for the second order pole. Okay. So how can we get how can we get second order pole? We can get second order pole either like this. Or uh, like this. Okay, there are two ways to get the second order pole. Let us consider the first way, this one. In order to exclude second order pole, we just need to say that V of X is linear. In this case, we will not get a second order pole or constant. Hmm? There is another source of the second order pole.
Gotta be in Gareth Jones' list. And of course, here you, you will see my favorite divergence. Okay. So, what are linear or constant vector fields with zero divergence hmm? in Rn? Of course, these are just isometries of Rn. If you consider the standard metric here, kk, kk prime, eta kk prime. What could be these conditions? Of course, conditions would be that vector fields are isometries of the metric. So when people write books on string theory, they mostly consider scattering amplitudes and they always want the incoming particle to fly with some momentum. They say, we are not interested in zero momentum. They're wrong. You should be interested in zero momentum because you will see symmetries. And it's good to have symmetries, after all. And so-called amplitudes with these vertex operators would correspond to ghosts corresponding to external symmetries. And in the similar fashion, these guys correspond to anti-fields. So, if you, if you open the Palchinsky book, you will never see it. If you open Green Schwartz book, you will never see it because uh, People don't like BV formalism on the okay. They just don't like BV. So the only person who likes BV is Swivers. He wrote a course on string theory. Maybe he mentioned this, but uh, I haven't seen it in his papers. Maybe I have to go through and try to find it there because he knows it. But it's important. It's important that not only CC bar should be included. Other powers of C's are important. So that's how it goes in bosonic string. Okay. Then you say, look, if you consider these fields like C times V, you cannot have infinitely many of them. You can have only finite many of them, right? Okay, it's normal. It means that you have just uh, one global symmetry or several global symmetries for the complicated scattering process. It's okay. So these CC bar guys may be considered as resonant terms. You may have arbitrary number of them. And these are special terms. Okay? Here we, here we have only finite number of them. So that's why that's what Witten should include in his paper. Would he think about bosonic string properly? 
but he didn't. And BCOE also went this way. BCOE also do, do not like BV formally. That's why, okay, so here was my comment on bosonic string. That's why Pasha, was it clear? I hope, I, I want you to start to think. Receiving Bazon extreme. So what I'm proposing to people, just rethink what great masters had written. Just rethink to see that there are many interesting things there. Okay? So instead of mu, go to polyvectors valued into zero star forms first second forget calabi yao matrix third, forget dimension three for many many reasons And if you do this, you would start the proper B model, okay? So go from old B model, B string, to modern B string, okay? And now, I want to make the last remark for today, okay? And my very last remark for today would be very drastic, very radical, saying that, let me announce it until people in V coupling, B string is not a string, but a field theory. And we were talking about V coupling. Let me argue how it happens. Ah, okay. Now, I see. Tomorrow, so I'll explain this tomorrow, okay? Because, so I made a statement mm -hmm. and I'll explain it tomorrow. Okay, <laughs> so it is the end of my uh, historic uh, journey together with kind of revisionism, okay? Revision. Okay, so see you. See you. Andy, thank you, thank you. Uh, by so please, uh, please, please uh, stop recordings. Who, who did recordings? Uh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, Andrei, th thanks very much. I need, need to okay, catch some sleep. See you later. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. And please can I have you. a small Bye. question? Yes. So for first, we need to let Pasha to go to sleep because you know it is like. Uh, Yes, for a few minutes to wait. You need to sub subtract eight from now. Uh, sorry, eight in Moscow. Uh, so it's 520 in the United States. Okay. Okay, so he, he is sleeping. Yes, of course. So I, I was thinking, uh, what if I am interested in a system with an infinite number of uh, symmetries? 
there are systems with infinite number of symmetries. Uh, if you go to zero coupling limit oh, in the bosonic yeah. sigma model, you'll have infinite number of symmetries. And then you will have the BV action with infinite number of, uh, so cohomology would be infinite dimensional. It's normal. Oh, yeah, yes, I see. Moreover, it is good to go to place where you have maximum number of unbroken symmetries. It's a good starting point. Okay, by the way, I think the people in China have to have a dinner. Yes, yes, I have to leave. Okay, see you. Yes, so... Uh, so I don't know who made the recording, but uh, at least in China, people go, so in, in the United States, people go to sleep. In China, people go to have dinner. Okay. So let us continue tomorrow. <laughs>